Hello and welcome to That's a Wrap. My name is Anthony Gentry, and joining me today, as always, is... is a, oh, sorry, is Austin, Austin Jameson. Jameson. Hello. Yes. So today, we are going to talk about Tick, Tick, Boom and West Side Story. We sure are. We got a double feature today. Yeah, double feature. Musical weekend. We love ourselves, our musicals, and there's been a lot this year. It really has. Yeah. Like, just with mm. Dear Evan Hansen and The Heights, uh, the animated ones, Vivo. Yeah. Um, Encanto Encanto last week. There is so many. And a lot of Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yes. Stape all over it. So much Lin. Yeah. Um, But first, though, since it's the holiday season, Austin and I got each other some presents. We did. We're going to open them live. Yes. We get our live reactions. I really like uh, just the wrapping Mm, of mine because it is Peppa Pig and all of her family members with... uh, (laughs) Christmas lights surrounding them. The best and money can I buy. I love that. I'm very glad. I, I really do like this. That, that was my favorite. That yeah, I wrapped 80 percent of my <laughs> presents in that. It's really good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I um, guess should we open at the same time? Uh, we can do one at a time. Okay. I feel like that'd be better. Yeah. Do you um, want to go first or should I? I'll go first. Okay. I wonder what. I that wonder is. what it is. I'll play a little. <laughs> little good. Okay. I'd also like to comment on the wrap job. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can actually tell. Uh, well, visually, uh, obviously, our listeners cannot. Uh, but there's a golden Which ratio. Are all our of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All our audience. Absolutely. Um, but there's a golden ratio of where multiple different types of wrapping paper have been put yes. together to cover the box, which I think is better than what I could do still. Uh, there is a bow on his present there is. that I did not uh, tie. No, I am not that technically. Uh, <laughs> yeah capable of doing that no i absolutely feel that but <laughs> let's go ahead let's open let's open this present first christmas present for me of the season so oh. there we go i've st- i've ripped off a layer there's still wrapping <laughs> paper okay okay i believe I did so i'm seeing the wrapping. side uh, i believe that is oh it's like it's a marvel set it is okay. a marvel what oh my set? goodness it, this is awesome it's okay <laughs> All right. Dang, this is a good one. I'm excited. Uh, I got the Bro Thor's new Asgard set from the Infinity Saga Lego collection. Lego set. Uh, yes, Lego yeah. set, I should say. Um, God, this is, this is yeah, such a good I, set. I was looking through, and I'm I was excited. like, that is something I would want. That <laughs> looks awesome. I have the, um, the new Winter Village house, and oh, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm, I wonder if I could add this in. Oh, yeah, maybe. Just to add it on to the yeah. side. I know there's... um. Well, first of all, thank you. Yeah. Uh, there's no a lot problem. of um, sets where uh, there's like the sitcoms ones where yeah. it's like Friends and. Um, yeah, I've been uh, seeing that. I believe. Seinfeld, I think. Seinfeld is one of them. Yeah. There's another one that I forgot the they name of. They have Sesame of. Street, too. Yeah. That looks cool. And there's custom uh, MOC sets. I Don't ask me what it stands for because I don't know right now. <laughs> um, but they're like personally created ones that are custom. And. They put all of the sitcoms in one big apartment complex, and this oh, is yeah. like on one of the corners. Oh, that's cool. This is cool. I really do like this set. I'm I'm excited yeah, to build I'm this. Glad you like it. I was worried if you'd already had it. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> okay, so you that's made a good. good call. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got me. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's a box. It is a box. It's a cardboard box. It it's, is. Oh, it's fragile. I gotta it be is, careful. It is very fragile. Be very careful. With oh. It. Okay. I hope you appreciate appreciate my yeah. just a lot of scotch tape keeping it together. <laughs> oh, okay. I was worried if I'd have a... Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, there is a lot of tape on this. Yes. Oh, we got some bubble wrap. It was you got not me bubble wrap. Thing. I did. Oh, I, I love like bubble wrap. It. We'll pop it right in front of the mic. <laughs> Our listeners would love that. Yeah, I'm sure they would. Okay. Let's see. No. Oh my. Oh, that is amazing. It's it's like this um uh, award <laughs> basically mm-hmm. of a mic and it says that's a rap best podcast host Anthony Gentry. Oh my god, I'm yeah. going to display this. <laughs> this is amazing. I love this. I'm Thank glad. you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I should have just got you the bubble wrap. <laughs> Well, I hope you like it. I I love it. Oh my <laughs> god, this 
I was not expecting that. Yeah. It's going to make me cry. Best that podcast so host. good. Thank you. You deserve it. No, you are the best host. I'll take it then. Okay. <laughs> you just take a Sharpie. <laughs> Cross right. out my name. Yeah. Uh, but that uh, concludes our presence for the year. We were, yes. we're going to, we planned on doing it next week, but with university, uh, there was a, a couple weeks ago, it was supposed to be open and then the doors were locked and yeah. it got confusing. So instead of risking it, we did it today when we knew we could get on campus. Yes. And we're still going to try to do Spider-Man yes. uh, review either way. Uh, we talked about Spider-Man a lot, so maybe we should just save it for next week. We probably should. Yeah. We're going to end up talking about Andrew Garfield. We will. So it doesn't yeah. matter. So we'll come in. <laughs> Um, um, we won't plug MCU this early, besides yeah. the uh, Lego set that <laughs> the I Lego just set, got, because yeah. that's all our show um, is now. Beforehand, do you want, there was a new trailer that came out yes. for a Nicolas Cage movie called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Yes. And I gotta say, I have been waiting for this movie <laughs> since like, I think 2019, mm-hmm. since I heard it was coming out, and it's basically Nicolas Cage playing himself. Yes. A, a broke a man who gets an invite to this very rich man's party who is played by Pedro Pascal. Yes. And he's doing that so he can get a million dollars. And then I don't know what happens, but it just all goes wrong. Yeah, the description has something about like a CIA agent getting in contact with Nicolas Cage, but it just looks ridiculous. I didn't know it was ha- like what it was. I've not heard about it until the trailer dropped. Yeah. Uh, and oh my goodness, it, it sounds like a very good time. Who yeah. doesn't love Nicolas Cage? Yeah, it was supposed to come out this year. It was on like my most mm-hmm. anticipated list, and like this, like this trailer just shot it up. Yeah. The list for next year for me. I'm very excited. Yeah, you can never get enough of Nick Cage, and it's yes. just Nicolas. It's a Nicolas Cage movie. Where Nicholas play Cage plays Nicholas Cage, and it's just like, what else can you ask yeah. for? Here is the official description, okay. and it does sound bonkers, and I <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, a cash-strapped Nicholas Cage agrees to make a paid appearance at a billionaire superfan's birthday party, but he is really an informant for the CIA <laughs> since the billionaire fan is a drug kingpin uh, okay. and gets cast in a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, this. Like, that last part That's just comes funny. out of nowhere, yeah. and I love it. I cannot wait. This is going to be a very <laughs> fun movie. It is. It's got, obviously, Nicolas Cage, Pedro Pascal, Neil Patrick Harris, yeah. Tiffany Haddish, Ike Barinholtz, Sharon Horgan, who was really good in uh, Game Night. I don't know if you saw that. I'm not familiar. No. It's a great movie. But uh, she just had, like, a kind of small role in that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, this cast is stacked, and I cannot wait. Mm. It's going to be good. I'm very excited. Yeah, so uh, that comes out next year. Yeah. Is there like a date or just like 2022 is what I we're working on? I think 2022. Let's see if there's anything. Yeah, all I'm seeing is 2022. Okay. Oh, wait. April 22nd. There April is. already? We yeah. might be able to do an episode about this then. Oh, we might. We, we're yeah. If it comes out while we're doing this, we will yeah. be doing an episode about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Have you seen the new Hawkeye episode? No, I haven't. You have not. Okay. Oh my goodness. So I guess we are not talking about that. No. <laughs> it's oh. a it's a good one. I knew I was I, I had a lot of stuff going on today. Yeah. Um lots of rapping, lots of <laughs> driving to p- print pictures. Anyways. Uh I've not seen it yet. This is the second to last episode, correct? It is. Yeah. It's oh going by very quickly. Yeah. And it doesn't help that we got that two episode premiere yeah. too they pulled the one vision at least one really, of like nine episodes yeah but i'm really enjoying this episode okay it is I, it's so good no not episode but like season oh, overall, okay like i thought the show. <laughs> i was like you're not finished with the episode no i i am finished with the episode i okay. really like the episode but like this show i am really digging mm-hmm. i love it i i heard some people didn't really like episode four okay but i really enjoyed it have you seen that one Episode oh like the the like last week's yeah last thing? week's okay the four threw me off yes yeah. I have seen that yeah that was a really good episode I really like that too yeah uh, and like Kate and Clint just sitting around like ha- just talking having mm-hmm. a good time it's Christmas like come yeah. on let's just have a good time I I'm excited I I I feel like the episodes after this like the one I've not seen yet and the one mm-hmm. tomorrow or well obviously the one tomorrow are gonna not tomorrow next Wednesday. Yes. Are going to decide the fate of Hawkeye. 
because uh, I really liked Falcon and Winter yeah. Soldier while it was coming out, mm-hmm. and it like yeah. it was really good. It when was. You got Zemo. You got like all the different. You got Winter Soldier vibes, uh, and it's like all of that coming together. And then they keep adding more, and they keep adding more, and then and then it ends. It blows up on itself. Yeah. Before I mean, we time to develop it. I didn't dislike the last episode. I liked the last episode, mm-hmm. but it did just. It had a lot, yeah. to follow the up on. Flag Smashers arc was like, like just completely burned apart by yeah. the end. Yeah, and he was like, I, I even forgot his name, but uh, yeah. Captain America that we don't like. Oh, John Walker. John Walker, like he was like bad, him. and then I loved immediately he was good. He's the best. Oh part yeah, I of really the show. loved hating him. I like I loved his character, but that last episode it was just weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so. That was Hawkeye. Yeah, our temporary MCU for the week before yeah. we get on so, a Spider-Man tangent later, which we are seeing tomorrow. We are. Uh, and everybody else in the world is apparently <laughs> as well. I have um, deleted social media same. off my phone. I'm, I'm not going to get spoiled like I got spoiled for Endgame. I agree. I Tomorrow, the pre-sales when I left yesterday, or when yeah. I got there, um, for Thursday, we have like 18 screenings yeah. of Spider-Man. Is there... Over 300. Yes. Over 500. Yes. 1,000? No. 800. Less. It, probably by now 800, but whenever I got there, it was 701. Oh. Uh, just for Thursday night. Just for night. Thursday. <laughs> and it's like back-to-back shows. Um, the ones that we have like every couple days, they've added more sets because the ones mm-hmm. they add keep selling out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the initial set is like all but sold out. In our biggest <laughs> auditorium, there's 167 seats. As of yesterday, when I checked, 151 of those were sold. I'm guessing the front row is not. Yeah, Pe- people have like, uh, well, I think it's sp- uh, mostly the impressive thing. Which kudos to people is that they haven't bought out the handicapped row. Those oh, are all yeah. still open, but like everything else is taken. Like wow. even in our showing, where everybody else is like filled up, including the front mm-hmm. row. There's yeah. still seats available in the handicap. People oh, haven't just awesome. taken them. So, yeah. I get, kudos to that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I'm already seeing it twice tomorrow. You, yeah. I'm gonna try to sneak in another one on Friday. Another one on Friday? Like, or no? It, you mean like a third on Friday, or like a fourth? Because I know you. You said you had a ticket for a Friday. Right? Yeah, but I got rid of that. Okay. Uh, so because I have the subscription service for the theater, mm-hmm. and so I was like, well, I might as well just cancel that one so i can get a free ticket right. instead of like paying for two tickets yeah but yeah i'm gonna like friday morning like i think the earliest like 11 30 that sounds right so and it's gonna be i'm a gonna long day. yeah i'm gonna try to sneak in right there but if mm-hmm. not i might try to sneak in like saturday sunday not like li- physically sneak in yeah but like just get a ticket. This is a movie I'll probably end up seeing twice because i'm i know the first one is just gonna be it's gonna be crazy and yeah it's gonna like, it's gonna be way over the top in a bad way, uh, where yeah. like it good way where it's like yeah everybody's excited but please be quiet. I want to yeah. hear what my characters are saying. Yeah. It was it was nice in Endgame though. That was really the, cool. Yeah, the Mjolnir like that's yeah. I probably <laughs> spoilers. But like if you're here, um, you well know. I didn't I didn't say anything. I said Mjolnir. Mjolnir was destroyed though. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it, are, are we gonna do spoilers for all of the MCU now, what, Anthony? We are like quite far past that point. I know, point. I know. I've said on air. Uh, spoiler alert: Black Widow <laughs> dies. Um, but if you you know what I'm talking about, yeah. if I say Mjolnir, you um, know, you know. that moment is my favorite in the MCU's or MCU. Uh, Captain America, I think, is my favorite character next to Daredevil. Yeah. Um, and so that, oh my goodness, yeah. oh my oh. goodness, uh, it's gonna it was a loud good. theater. Yeah. Um, which is, but, uh, I'm expecting it, so I'm I'm hoping my I'm less disappointed when it happens. But if they like, if a reveal happens and then they like start going into dialogue and people are still like that will be losing annoying. their mind, I'll get annoyed. I'll tell you what wasn't a loud theater though. Tick tick boom, because <laughs> I watch this at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Same with almost everyone else. Yeah. Do you want to start with Tick, Tick, Boom or yeah. West Side Story? Let's do Tick, Tick, Boom. Okay. Okay. So, this is the newest movie. We should explain the researching. Yes. Uh, so, our show is basically there's two of us. Uh, we both watch each movie, and one of us 
kind of goes in blind, doesn't look up anything about the film, just has their base experience, and that's it. And the other one looks into everything they can about the movie, does a lot of research, so it becomes kind of this dynamic where every yeah. one knows everything, the other doesn't know anything mm-hmm. except what they saw. And so in this case for Tick, Tick, Boom, I am the researcher. I am blind. Yes. And so this is the latest movie mm-hmm. by Lin-Manuel Miranda, his actually first directing yeah. job. I, I want to add real quick, for West Side Story that we're doing after we finish the Tick, Tick, Boom yes. in this episode, I am researching that. And yes, you are. Anthony is blind. So, anyways... Yeah. Lin-Manuel Miranda in his first directing debut. Yeah. So, um, Andrew Garfield is in this. I actually have a funny story about how he got cast for okay. later on. Um, uh, along with uh, Vanessa Hudgens, Ale- uh, Alexandra Shipp, uh, Robin De Jesus, Joshua Henry, uh, Ben Levy Ross, Bradley Whitford, who mm-hmm. I thought was really good in this movie. And it's basically, um, it's kind of this adaptation of this Broadway musical about um jonathan larson yes who wrote the original musical and it's kind of confusing at first because the musical you don't say in its broadway form was a three-person show with jonathan larson and two other people like i think just his friends probably and they and larson kind of goes through this very pivotal moment in his life where he is getting ready to like release this brand new musical to the world and something goes wrong we're not gonna say what goes wrong but you kind of feel it coming Mm -hmm. and also it's very tragic because he um he in this movie he's 30 years old and he dies when he's 35 so just five years later Mm -hmm. and so the entire movie is about kind of like, what do we do with the time that we have? Yeah. Like, should we try and, like, be artists, like, be what we want to be? Or should we, like, succumb to society and just, like, choose the safe option? hmm And I really enjoy this movie. It's... Did you? Yes. It is so good. Especially Andrew Garfield in this. He's so good. I Like, at first, I was kind of so-so on it. I was like, it's fine. Um, especially because I was very confused with what was going on because in this, you do see the original Tick, Tick, Boom being played out with Andrew Garfield and the cast, but they also combine it with like kind of like a biographical movie in a sense where they just visualize everything that is talked about in the, in the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And once that clicked for me, I was very enthused by this movie i really liked it Mm -hmm. of course like i do have some problems with it some of the songs don't hit for me Mm -hmm. but a lot of the songs do especially 3090 Mm -hmm. i loved it what did you think austin allow me to paint the path that i took when i watched this movie anthony watched it first and he was raving about it um obviously we didn't we didn't talk in depth but it was enough where he said, like, he really, really liked it. And he think he said, and I quote, I think you'd really like it. <laughs> I did. Um, you like Lin-Manuel Miranda. Do I? Is that the word that you would use? Love. It's not, <laughs> it's not quite the word I would use. Um, so <laughs> I finally find a night. I, um, I'm at... My girlfriend's who currently has a projector set up for like our, like what would usually be a TV. And so we're watching Tick, Tick, Boom on a big old projector on a big old wall. Um, and we start it and it starts going. And like I don't – I eloquently I cannot properly describe how confusing and how lost I was the entire time in that movie. Yeah, it is confusing. I'm familiar – with Lin Manuel Miranda and his writing, and how like, if you're not familiar with what's going on, everything he says or his characters say will go right over your head, and it did for me. The yeah, the um, the parallel between the the musical itself of Tick Tick Boom and his like the bi uh, biography of his life never clicked for me. 
yeah. that was in- so confusing the entire time. I, I will give you that. So basically, the timeline mm-hmm. is he is say like twenty two. He starts writing this musical called Superbia. Mm-hmm. They, you don't see any of that. Um, flash forward eight years, he's thirty <laughs> years old, no. which is where the movie takes place. Mm-hmm. And it is him a week away from debuting Su- Superbia with like a cast workshop mm-hmm. and like trying to get someone to buy the rights to it so they can get it on stage and he can become a success. Yeah, and then. Uh, I think two years later, when he's 32, is when he premieres Tick, Tick, Boom. Okay. And then, yeah. three years after that, Rent comes out. Which, if we didn't say, he yeah. is the writer of Rent. He made Rent. And then, tragically, passed away. the night before Rent premiered yeah. is when he died. It was um, an undiagnosed Marfan's syndrome. Gotcha. So, while watching this, I was even thinking, like, he has five years left and he has no idea like he might Mm -hmm. have this disease right now and he's not aware of it yeah and for me like that also just made it that much more compelling for me Mm -hmm. just seeing how his life is unfolding seeing like his doubts and his worries and knowing that he is going to be a success yeah but the tragedy of him never knowing that i went in completely blind I knew absolutely nothing about what I was going to be watching. I knew it was called Tick, Tick, Boom, and I had Andrew Garfield, and it was a musical with Lin-Manuel Miranda. I didn't know if Jonathan Larson was a real person or if this was a fictional story, Oh, if this was real life or whatnot. They do kind of tell you um, off the bat. I, it, with Lin, I didn't know if that was an artistic choice, if he was trying to cut between, like, Here's Tick, Tick, Boom, which is like a real story, and here's our fictional take on it, which it kind of is. It's yeah. real. It's not fiction, but it's a artistic take on it. Yeah. They um, do say uh, at the beginning, like, this is Jonathan Larson. Everything you're about to see is real, except for the things John made up. Um, that in itself is uh, – it threw me completely off course. <laughs> um, yeah. To be fair, Lynn did not write this. Um, Stephen Levinson write, wrote this. The story? Yes. Okay. Uh, who also wrote Dear Evan Hansen. Did, really? He did. Like the original? The original or? and the movie. He wrote like the book. He wrote the book for all that? Yeah. And oh. he wrote the film, like the screenplay for Dear Evan Hansen. And he wrote the screenplay for this. That checks out. That <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> um... We never got to talk about Dear Evan Hansen, unfortunately, no. but my God. We'll I talk about we it later. It'll be a bonus episode. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Outside of the story, outside of, like, um, my, my favorite part of Tick, Tick, Boom was the one song from Superbia that plays over and yeah. over again. That was really good. Yeah. I will say, um, I, Sunday. It's trash. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Most of the songs I really, really didn't like. Um, Some of the songs. Thirty ninety, fine. Thirty ninety is you. a banger. I'll give it to it you. It is a banger. Look me in the eye and say you like therapy. I love therapy. You're insane. Yes. It's like, okay. The song itself. Put it. Put it away from. Uh, are we able to describe the context, or would that be too spoilery? We, I should also mention the movie is on Netflix and it came out November like nineteen. Yeah, it's it's been a while. It's been about yeah. a month. Therapy is a song. Let's see how you paint this into a <laughs> into a good something light. that makes sense. Hey, I asked our viewers, and <laughs> the majority of them wanted liked uh, Tick Tick Boom more than West so, Side Story. Yes, that's assuming they saw both. Though. I don't know that. I'm not <laughs> gonna doubt you, all but like <laughs> it was a day after <laughs> West Side Story opened. Oh my goodness! But um, so you're talking to the wrong crowd right now, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but so therapy, it's this, it um plays in the background of this breakup scene between yeah. John and his girlfriend. It does, and I love it. It is a it. rejected Chuck E. Cheese theme song, bro. <laughs> That's the point. It's awful. It's like there's the there's, I- the irony that you're supposed to get from it does not land with me at all. It landed That's, with me. That breakup scene could have had so much more actual emotion and power to it if it wasn't cut in, cutting between Andrew Garfield literally acting like an animatronic 
I felt I, that added to the dramatic death. How? Well, because it's like they're both driving themselves crazy with this fight and like trying to act like everything's okay, like they're animatronics, just acting like everything's okay. It would, and then been... it all explodes. It it and... would have been fine if they went with either route. Where if they went full therapy song, animatronic, do this performance to represent the breakup. But, like, it's not even subtle. They cut between it, like, every couple seconds they of do, this love... high-paced high polka song. And then, like, Andrew Garfield and his, like, about-to-be ex-girlfriend. Or not Andrew Garfield, but, like, Jonathan Larson yeah. in the, the musical. It, with his about-to-be ex-girlfriend in tears, yelling at each other, like... That is emotional, and the song is not. The it song is, does though. not fit the moment at all. I mean, I can, I honestly, I can see where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. I can see exactly where you're coming from. But I, I don't know. I just really liked that part because I felt that, like, kind of the comedicness of it with it's not supposed the to be fast, fun. but with the it, fast-paced style of the music, especially with when it's. <laughs> The scene mm-hmm. of them fighting and that fast pace and it's like you know it's going down like it is happening, it is escalating. If I had done it, I wouldn't have done it like that. Lin Manuel Miranda and the gang that works with him <laughs> is um he does have a gang. He's like the he, he he's the a, Adam he Sandler a... of musicals. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, um, I don't know how I feel about that. What? Um, I I love Adam Sandler, but he always he, brings in like Kevin uh, James, he had, uh, and, uh, Philippa, like, uh, Sue, and the, all yeah. them, and in Sunday. Also, I was told that okay. I also the, one of the other things I would say I went into Tick Tick Boom expecting was a bunch of Broadway cameos and stars. I was told yeah, that that's they're in like one scene. That's what I didn't know. Um, and yeah. so I'm like, okay, sure. We get to the Sunday song, and. Andre De Shields is there. That was really cool. I saw Hades Town recently in Columbus. That mm-hmm. was amazing. So it was cool seeing him, but I didn't recognize anyone else. And that's on yeah. me because it like it is a bunch of stars that I just I'm not familiar with. I recognized a few people. It was like my expectations were definitely too high. My expectations were too high for this movie. That happens too often. I yeah, I I might have raised it too much. I, for I you. was like I, me and my girlfriend went in genuinely expecting it to be like, like four stars or more. Like mm-hmm. this is a hit. And we, like, when the movie ended, it was just like, what did we actually just watch? The song that I believe is in Tick, Tick, Boom and is, like, recreated in um in, t- in the original musical of Tick, Tick, Boom and is recreated is the Play a Game one. Is that what it's called? It's Please look I, that up. Yeah, I'm going to have to look um, that up. It's the one where it's, like, it's kind of like hip-hop and he, like, it puts uh, the filter in the yeah. TV. Yeah, that's the Play a Game. Play a Game. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was weird. I will say they are there are a lot of weird choices it in this movie. It felt like a clip show and then like we're that cutting did. in between like songs that are like that and then a breakup scene and then him mm-hmm. like trying to debate debut his um uh Superbia. Superbia and then I guess this is a spoiler alert cuz I didn't expect it. Um I guess gonna, to now for the I'm next 30 about, seconds if you don't want to know. Um I'm going to talk about Bradley Whitford's character. Oh, that's not a spoiler. Okay. Stephen Sondheim is, um, well, recently he did pass away, unfortunately. Yes. But he is portrayed by Bradley Whitford in this musical. I think he's great in this movie. Um, I, I, I agree. I like Bradley Whitford. It's a very short amount of time. Every but time great. I see him on the screen, I I'm think like, of Billy, Billy Madison. Madison. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he's great. And he did a really good job, like, portraying this, like, uh, distant mentor in the form of Sondheim as he was to Jonathan Larson. Yeah. Um, also, like, while we were talking about performances. Uh huh. You got to give it up to Andrew Garfield. He, even if you don't like the movie, his performance is so good. He did a good job. He did. Um, do you know how he was cast? Is this the shoe story? Shoe? Okay, well, I have Isn't something that? for you then. <laughs> okay, well, no. So, uh, when Lin-Manuel was, like, looking for stuff, he saw Andrew Garfield on stage. I forget what uh, play it was, but mm-hmm. it was a play. It was not a musical. Okay. And they had a mutual friend in a massage therapist. And so okay. Lynn manuel Miranda, <laughs> he was this. getting massaged. Yeah. And he was like, hey, you know Andrew Garfield, right? And the massage therapist said, yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. And Lynn said, do you know if he can sing? Because I'm trying to cast people for, my, for this new movie I'm doing. And he said, oh, you bet it. Like, he's got the voice of an angel. He is so good at singing. Mm-hmm. And Lynn was like, 
Oh, great. I'll call him up then. Yes. And then, <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, God. And then, so then afterwards, when Lynn leaves, he calls up Andrew Garfield and he's like, hey, hey, man, do you know how to sing? And Andrew Garfield says, no, I'm a horrible singer. <laughs> and the massage therapist said, Okay, well, I just told Lynn Manuel Miranda <laughs> yeah. that you know how to sing, so you have about a year. Cool. And Andrew Garfield, he took that challenge and mm-hmm. he exceeded it. His singing in this is really good. I loved him in Amazing Spider Man. I did. Too. <laughs> His singing voice, it was beautiful. <laughs> anyway, and listen, he was good. And I, or, uh, to expand on the story, what I'd heard, it, it's not, I guess it's more of an extension of that. Um, was they were, they were doing some like it was an interview or one of the, like a panel I believe at some London ba- well I don't know he's just British so I think of London um, <laughs> another British Spider Man well he's not he's not technically British he was born in America and then he went to Britain <laughs> at a young age genuinely from the bottom of my heart I'm sorry <laughs> how could I <laughs> um, he has a British accent yeah how could and that's you? enough. <laughs> Um, you should know this. But there was a panel where Andrew Garfield was talking about how he was like doing some warm ups or uh, some sort of set for Tick Tick Boom, and Lin Manuel Miranda was like kind of scurrying his way through the set, and he like p- poked his head in through the door to like, and he saw Andrew Garfield, and he saw like listened to him singing, and then he took Lin Manuel took his shoe and threw it at Andrew Garfield and said, "Andrew Garfield, you can sing." Yeah, that's a thing. Um, and then he was Musical, like, like theater directors they mm-hmm. do that yeah speaking from experience yeah <laughs> they uh, do that <laughs> uh and then andrew garfield said that lynn said um they aim it away though just so everyone knows <laughs> hmm? it's completely safe they, they don't aim it directly at the oh, person. yeah that'd be <laughs> more entertaining if they did <laughs> it would um, be but but he was like don't let anybody ever uh i'm, I'm gonna misquote this so i'm not gonna super try but it was like don't let anybody tell you that you can't sing uh like, because you can. Something like that. Yeah. That was what I heard, which is probably... It's like still, Ratatouille. Anyone can tr- cook. Anyone can sing. That's true. Yeah. I... <laughs> interesting comparison. I did not imagine us talking about Ratatouille today. Great movie. Um, 10 out of 10. Anyway. True. Another bonus episode? Ooh. Um, yeah, I didn't... I didn't like to do film. I really enjoyed this movie. My... my I'm trying to think of what movie recently I went in with just super duper high expectations and then like yeah expectations are everything really when you go into free guy free guy is what I walked into because I I yeah I'd heard so many good things yeah I went in with like relatively low expectations because I did see the reviews Mm -hmm. and I always try to like keep my expectations low because I know it will get the best of me and I enjoyed that movie I was like pleasantly surprised Mm, my expectations were just too too high i knew taiki watiti was in it which i was really excited for and yeah. i ended up not liking his character um i it, w- it just, was a weird character yeah it's it, him as an actor and stuff he's not directing uh i feel hits different mm-hmm. but that's how it goes um the, to get off topic of free guy um tick tick boom was not the movie for me i'm gonna say it what are you Andrew say? Garfield is should get an Oscar for this performance, if not a nomination. Do you hear the silence? Uh, <laughs> he I, his performance is so good. I mean, I can see also with the limited amount of time Bradley Whitford gets. Yeah, I can see him getting a best supporting for Sondheim. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have too many objections, but like I, I yeah. would, I would nominate Andrew <laughs> Garfield. Listen, maybe I would. If you're listening to this, Andrew Garfield, I would absolutely nominate <laughs> you. Please come on the show. We would love to have you on as a guest. Talk about um anything you want. You we know, won't press yeah. you about Spider Man. We promise. No, of course not. Um, but we'll know by tomorrow if you're in it. <laughs> so <laughs> you can come on and we'll talk about it. Do you see um, that interview where he was like, you know, that game of the werewolf? I'm not the werewolf. And everyone thinks I'm the werewolf. Oh, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> so he's going crazy <laughs> in all these interviews asking yeah. him if he's Spider-Man. Oh, and okay. So it's like, uh, did you ever play that game? Like, are you the werewolf? or? Oh, uh, like... um, It's like uh, Heads Up 7-Up, kind I, of. I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so like where 
everyone puts their heads down, and then someone's the werewolf. Oh, I know. And what you're then about. they okay. go around and the, they. Quote I know it by another like, name. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different variations of it. I okay. like I didn't play werewolf, but I played a variation of it, mm-hmm. and like. So then you have to figure out who it is. Yeah. But if you're the werewolf, like, you obviously don't want to be found out. So you're right. like, I'm not the werewolf. Uh-huh. But sometimes innocent people are picked, and they're like, I'm not the werewolf. And so okay. in this situation, Andrew Garfield is saying, I'm not the werewolf. <laughs> Stop asking me. Yeah, that, that's got to be the most frustrating part, because I know he was on a few, like, talk show hosts for Tick, Tick, yeah, Boom. Yeah, just trying to promote Tick, Tick, Boom, the eyes of Tammy Faye. Yeah. Who was also not a great movie, but he was that. great in. Mm-hmm. He he just he deserves an Oscar for either of those things. He, he deserves an Oscar for Spider Man. He does. Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man was great, but we're gonna talk <laughs> about that next week. I I keep coming back to Spider Man. <laughs> I know. If you can't tell, this is the finale of our first season. I don't know what is. <laughs> Uh, well, next week we're gonna we get next week, yeah. we're gonna like get to next episode and have nothing to talk about. <laughs> Which we're not gonna we're not gonna mention Spider Man. We're gonna do something completely That'd be funny. different. We should do Nightmare Alley. Join instead. us next week for Clifford. <laughs> Clifford Part Two. You know what? I love it. Austin hates it now. I could never, <laughs> unless something you drastically changes in my life. You gave it a four. Yeah, that's not and good. And I like if I had to watch. Clifford 10 times or Tick, Tick, Boom one more time. I would watch Clifford 100 more times instead because I I just can't stomach it. Tick, Tick, Boom was great. What would you rate it? On Letterboxd, um, I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. Oh, my God. Uh, if I had to give it a number score, probably like a 40, 46 in that Ooh, range. I did yeah. not enjoy it. I'd give it like – an eight out of ten, mm-hmm. maybe eight point five. It's not even like with Midsummer where I talked about it last week, where it's like a really, really good movie that I really, really didn't like. This mm-hmm. was just a really, really something movie. I don't know. I it it's good in some eyes. I did not like the choices that were made. Yeah, in see, like it. I was feeling how you were feeling for a mm-hmm. lot of it, but then it just clicked. Yeah, and I just I really love just the themes of it with. Like, he just desperately wants to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's getting all these obstacles in his way. Yeah. And it's like, like, he knows. He doesn't know how, but he knows he doesn't have much time left. Yeah. There's another song where uh, it's, like, one of the big songs of Superbia Mm -hmm. where it's the actress. like, Senses? I think so. Um, The one that Vanessa Hudgens sings, but then uh, Alexandra That makes no sense to me. Like, or it makes, okay, it makes sense, but the choice to have both of their voices, like, be there, and I I get why they did it, and I, I'm not going to, like, no, contest. No, I, I see what you mean. But it, in rea- in reality, it should be, like, Vanessa Hudgens' voice, um, is that her singing that song? Yeah. Uh, like, in, in Superbia, because uh, that's what the audience is hearing. But we get this weird duet. Of like switching between his girlfriend and Vanessa Hudgens' character, uh, who's plays uh, Alexandra Sh- plays Susan. Okay, and then Vanessa Hudgens is Caressa. Gotcha. And basically, in that scene, it's at the workshop. Uh, Andrew Garfield, who also this song is very important, just because it is. he has no idea what to do, and he finally writes it at the last minute. Mm-hmm. And so it's Vanessa or C- Caressa singing it, but uh, Jonathan Larson says. All I could hear was Susan singing it. Mm-hmm. And so it was like kind of uh, Susan singing to him, like, yeah. come to your senses. Like, I don't know. I guess I don't know what I would have done differently. Well, I do, yeah. but it, I feel like it it probably would have been worse. It was a weird situation, especially in film, in a musical film, where you're set to, like, you have to, like, straddle the line between what what is everybody else actually going to hear and what is the audience going to hear. Um mm-hmm. And that part didn't sit well with me. It was odd. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, good song, but like, I don't know. I liked also. I like swimming. Uh, I I think I remember that one. Also, just weird. It was I, weird, but I liked the visuals. The entire of it. movie, which I okay, this I, I was gonna say it as a not compliment, but I guess it is a compliment. <laughs> um, it felt like, um. I, I not holding my breath, but like the I couldn't catch my breath the entire time. Mm-hmm. It was just going so quickly. 
which is what they're going for. Yeah, so it is what they're going. That's for. where one of the stars of yeah. my two of them comes it's from. It's where the tick tick comes right. from. Like, uh, but also I just loved the motif of that clock ticking. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I do agree with you in a lot of in actually a lot of stuff. I just think it is challenging because you do have to have a base knowledge going into this. Yes. And okay, yeah, you you're kind of making me want to lower my score now, just because a movie shouldn't have to have this base knowledge going in, unless it is like a franchise movie and it's like mm-hmm. the fifth sequel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe I'd give it, maybe like a seven, mm-hmm. just like lower it a little bit because I I do enjoy yeah. a lot of it. Some of the songs don't hit for me, like Sunday. Yeah. I thought like it was it was all right, it was cool, but then there was no point to the movie like for it in the story mm-hmm. um I just even re- what uh no you finish your thought okay. mine's stupid i was gonna say no more do i like the beginning of it but then as it kept going on i just felt it it got worse mm-hmm. and so that kind of dampened me too okay i i just remembered a detail in tick tick boom that okay. i didn't learn until later um the diner that he works at um, yeah What's the name of it? I forgot. Like Moon Mo- Moonrise, Moon- Moonrise, something like that. That diner. Probably Moonrise. It's notable, notable enough to f- be featured in the first Raimi Spider-Man film where Mary yes. Jane works. Yes. I did. I I was watching uh the <laughs> Raimi film and Always I was like bringing it back to Spider-Man. <laughs> Andrew Garfield works there, um or John Larson. Uh, but anyways, I saw a path back to Spider-Man and I yep. couldn't give it up. <laughs> Uh, we have 19 minutes left and another movie to talk about. Oh, so yes. Let's I'd get into suggest that. We start talking about West Side Story, the new 2021 remake by Steven Spielberg. Yes. Um, right off the bat, I will say, or you, you, you go ahead and start. Okay, yeah. I had very low expectations going into this. Okay. Spielberg is my favorite director, mm-hmm. but he has never done a musical. True. This is a remake. Stop stealing my fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But um, he has never done a remake. Like, the cast, I didn't know much of them. Mm -hmm. So going into this, I was like, I don't know. I loved this movie. I agree. It was so good. Yeah. It's like, my favorite thing about it is that it was a musical. Well, granted, it was a remake. I've not seen the the original West Side Story because, honestly, I tried and I just couldn't stomach it. The 1961 vibe of, like, the poor sound – or pretty good sound quality but like just the dudes dancing through the street and yeah. vibing i just couldn't get through it i've only seen the first 40 minutes of that mm-hmm. and that's because in my choir class in high Same. school and I, middle um, school whenever there was a sub they put on sound of music or west side story yeah, so i've Stomp memorized the, the first 40 group? minutes of sound of music i'm sorry that was my the blue man group or Stomp group? is what no, i no, no. watch so i've seen the first 40 minutes a few yeah. times of west side story fair enough but i, I don't remember much america uh the original yeah. Um, that that song in this movie was so good too. They all are. Like yes. I have such a appreciation for West Side Story now. Yeah, we want to. If you want to talk about Oscars, holy yeah, give Oscars to them all. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> they, Ziegler, mm-hmm. like fir- this is her first this film is debut, her first movie. Yeah, she has played Maria on stage productions yeah, before, I, but um, like it. Everybody, kn- they they got. I would say besides uh. I'm, I always mess up his name. Is it Ansel Elgort? Ansel Elgort. Ansel Elgort. I always say Angel Elsgort because I, <laughs> I just I just scramble the letters. Uh, Ansel Elsgort. Ansel Elgort? Yes. Did I say Ansel, okay. yes. Now that that's done, uh, I would say he's the only one closest to getting like a celebrity face in this. Yeah. Um, He, he still knocks it out of the park. He, he's still really good, too. But beyond that point, everybody else is like Broadway stars and like actual singers, and they all fit the role. It doesn't feel like they got somebody who like can can sing but doesn't fit that style of singing. Like Rachel uh, Rachel Ziegler as um, make sure I have the cast here to make sure I get all the names right. Yeah, Rachel Ziegler, um, phenomenal as Maria. Phenomenal. And th- yeah, like I said, this is her first movie. Yes. And then before th- before this movie came out, like a year ago, she was cast as Snow White. Yeah, in the new I Snow saw White that. movie and in Shazam two. Yeah. And I, it just made me think, how good is she in this movie? Mm-hmm. To where no one has like even seen it yet, except probably like all the studio executives. Yeah. 
and to the point where she is already getting three major roles yeah. in these high profile movies and she she earns it like she knocks Absolutely. us out of the park like if like w- even like what I said with Andrew Garfield she should I- either get the Oscar or get nominated for it mm-hmm. uh, it across the board the cast was really good yes. there was also the original Anita um, from the first West Side Story made oh, a, yeah. a, a can or well, at least a cameo just played uh, her name is Valentina. Valentina, the store owner, the candy store owner that gives shelter to Tony. Yeah. I hear like it's a different character than the original. Mm-hmm. Like the original, is just like some person named Doc. Yeah, that's the that is unfortunately the realm that I can't give fun facts in because yeah. I could sit here and list off a, a like long list of differences and comparisons between the original movie and this one. But I, to us at least. Uh, that wouldn't be much or very fulfilling conversation. Uh, so I'm going to focus more solely on this movie as a standalone besides, like, Raider Moreno, who yeah. um, I believe turned 90 oh, recently. Wow. Uh, yeah. 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 Also, um, for those of you who don't know what this movie is about, true. think Romeo and Juliet, but with gangs mm-hmm. in New York in the 60s. Yeah. And it, it really is Romeo and Juliet. I would disagree for really? reasons that I well, it is Romeo and Juliet, but it's not. They make the, alterations for sure. The like major alterations to the ending that I'm not going to super duper talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we can since it, it's the same. I don't think we should talk about. I don't it. think we should. It's the same story as the original. Uh, there with some minor like yeah um, adjustments. Um, but. There is some beats in the original Romeo and Juliet telling that they they choose not to do, um, yeah. But I f- it, which I feel like takes away from the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, um, I was I was I was expecting one thing, and then I got something else. Yeah, but it I still felt kind of that emotional impact mm-hmm. of um, without going too much in Romeo and Juliet at the end, they're like our fighting led to something really bad. Mm-hmm. And in this one, they also have the same reaction where like, we are fighting led to something very bad, mm-hmm. but it is a little dampened yeah. because the, something really bad is different. We probably shouldn't <laughs> yeah. keep talking about this. Yeah, It's hard to talk about endings of movies in a but, mostly um, spoiler free podcast. Yeah. But I do hear that, like they, they say like, this is legit Romeo and Juliet. Like the writers, like yeah, it was inspired. That Another definitely Stephen what Sondheim, they're directly... uh, production. True, he did the original Broadway. Um, it's really all just gr- like great. Uh, to yeah. stay on the um topic of cast for now, uh, Ariana Debose is the one who played Anita in Anita. the yes. um, original, or not the original, in the in new one. one. And so she is such a good. She's probably like one of the standouts for me mm-hmm. in a film full of standouts she was absolutely amazing uh and like the most uh there's a new york times article where they interview both her and rita moreno oh yeah um and you can imagine the amount of pressure that ariana had on her. there is a scene with anita and uh rita moreno Mm -hmm. and i'm i was just thinking it's cool seeing both anita's on stage on not stage but film but man, you can just imagine the pressure yeah. of not only filming that specific scene, mm-hmm. but also filming it with the original Anita there. Yeah, uh, the first time that they like met each other, uh, Ariana was not expecting uh, to be in a room with her because mm-hmm. uh, she knew, but it was to a point where like she forgot until right <laughs> then. Um, and so they like rita moreno was very chill and the yeah. er, in the interview she was talking about their first initial like meeting uh and meeting ariana but ariana was so extremely nervous which is absolutely understandable and so yeah. rita like they took her or she took ariana out to lunch and they like talked and like they i, I i'm not sure if they're close now it seems from mm-hmm. the interview that i read that they are um but I, one thing that we can use to segue is in that interview ariana's asked about um like what fulfillment is there in retelling classic stories um where we already have west side story and this re remake is pretty dang similar 
There's nothing yeah. drastically changed, and it's the same story, and it's the mo- same music. Um, granted, some songs are switched around. Okay. Um, but uh, in it's the New York Times article to, uh, by Melina Rizik, I believe, is the person who runs the interview. Okay. Ariana says, and that's why we retell classics. That's what makes them classic. The ability to be retold and reimagined. You give things historical context so that you can better understand the text to make it tangible. Which I feel like is another thing I really liked of this movie is that they didn't change a lot to make it more acceptable in our time. Yeah, it still felt like it takes place yeah, in the fifties and sixties. There are some very problematic things in this movie. Yes, but it's like it that would be stuff that would be happening at that time, like right. especially um, on the jets. Mm-hmm. Their racism towards the sharks yeah. and just the entire Puerto Rican community. Mm-hmm. It's oh yeah. Also, the gangs are these um like uh, New York like natives, I guess. Mm-hmm. Just all a bunch of white people, and they're the Jets. Yes. And then the other gang are these Puerto Ricans named the Sharks, who really are just trying to settle down and like find yeah. like a place to live. Mm-hmm. And um, the Jets are like, you're in our territory, get out. Right. I feel like it would have been really easy for anybody to take West Side Story and then paint it in what, if it was created today, would have been a much different light, mm-hmm. where um, it would be along the lines of the Puerto Ricans like getting more voice and like more like equal treatment. But they stay honorary to the original, and they still tell that story, which like DeBose uh, says here is what makes it a classic is that yeah. they're able to retell that story and have the same emotional impact. Yeah. And I saw like the jets, like they are so much like, like kind of villains, but so are the sharks. Like, yeah, they're, they both do bad things. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially in one scene, I just, it kind of went over for me. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I do not like the jets. Yeah. But, um, you probably know what I'm talking about. I believe so. It, um, but yeah, like I really liked the dynamics between everyone, uh, the sharks and the jets. Yeah, we have uh, Mike Feist as yes, Riff from he, I love another Mike Feist. Dear Evan Hansen yeah. reference. Is it Feist or Feist? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. I'm gonna okay. say Feist because that's okay. how my uh, English brain interprets that <laughs> word. Okay, yeah, Mike Feist. Um, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's also one of those like smarmy people who yeah. like you do not he plays like the leader of the jets yes and so and you can imagine his kind of smugness yeah that he's the best he friend of to tony have. who yes. is also el Gord. Yes. and there's Ber- bernardo who mm-hmm. is the leader of the sharks who is maria's sister yes and he's also not the best dude either Mm-mm. but at least for him i feel like they do give a lot of sympathy to the um to the sharks mm-hmm. as opposed to the jets right because like for him He's a leader of this gang, but it doesn't seem like he really wants to. Yeah. It just seems like he feels like he has to because Definitely. he's just trying That's a good way of putting it. to mark this life with his sister. Yeah. And they even talk about, like, he wants to leave America, which is when the song America comes in with right. Anita. It's just it's a banger. so great. I yeah. Have, I have had Maria, the song, on loop for, like, the past week. It is so good. Yeah, uh, and I feel bad for never listening to it before. <laughs> um, but everybody just does such a good, gosh darn take on it. Yeah, uh, and it, Officer Crumpy. Yeah, that was that such was, a good scene. It was. I didn't. I didn't expect to like this song at all. But it, it's just good music. Yeah, and they. It's good storytelling, uh, in music, which is the point of a musical. Yeah, Steven Spielberg is like such a good director. Yeah, he tackles this with like. So much of just his Steven Spielbergness, yeah. he is so good in this. Speaking of music, this is the sixth film without John William or Spielberg's sixth film without John Williams as the uh, composer, but uh, he was actually brought in as a music consultant. Oh, uh, okay. To do music consultant things, I don't have much more yeah. details <laughs> there, but um, obviously, where Spielberg uh, Spielberg goes. Williams mm-hmm. is not far behind. Yeah. I, I love how Spielberg is able to make you hate these characters. Yeah. But also 
at the turn of a like dime, like not like just love them too. Mm-hmm. Where like you see how bad they are, but then they have this kind of charisma with them. Whereas like you're you're still dancing along with them. You're right. just like uh, tapping your feet to the music. Uh-huh. You're having a good time, but you do see they're, they're kind of bad people. Yeah. Uh, it is four fifty five. So uh, we can go unless there's anything over. notable you want to. Um, well, I, I was going to go ahead and wrap up here soon. I was going to okay. go through the rest of my stuff. If you want to talk about anything or go like a little bit longer, um, I'm okay with that. But what what do you want to do? Um, yeah, it, I don't know if I have much else to say. Just okay. besides this movie is, if not one of the best movies of the year. Yeah. Like, it is so good, uh, especially, like, Rachel Ziegler. Yeah. Like, Maria, like, she is so good. Mm-hmm. What, like, one of my only problems with it is a problem I had with Romeo and Juliet, how they fell in love so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, well, like, immediately, like, come run away with me. They do the me. Charlie and Max stare yeah. from across the spaghetti restaurant. Uh, also, yes, that scene. I, like, legitimately thought going in, because I also went in blind. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, these are, like, 25-year-olds, but they're still young enough to be, like, kids and stuff. Like, they don't – that's also kind of the heartbreak of it because they're just kids. They don't really know the weight of what they're doing. Mm, That's what Officer Grumpy's about, and it's just so good. Yeah. And so – and I'm like, okay, they're kids. And they go to this dance, Mm -hmm. and it's a school dance. And at first I'm like, okay, it's just, like, a a city dance. It's a town dance Mm -hmm. because they're, like, like 25. And then, especially with Ansel Elgort there. Yeah. And then uh, this guy comes up and he's like, hey, it's a school function. And I was like, what? Are you telling me they're all like 17, 16 years old? I don't, I don't know about that. One second. No, they are. Like, they, they are, they supposed, are to be, supposed to be teenagers. Yeah, they're supposed to be like 17, 18. <laughs> and like, I had no problem thinking that Maybe. with Maria because she is like, yeah. like 18, 19. But Ansel Elgort, <laughs> yeah. who played um, a like. 16 17 year old convincingly because he was around that age in fallen our stars yeah. seven years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't like, even think hey. about that yeah he has that like deep like like and like wait. you'd think if anything he'd be a, ho- a like a high school dropout no like hey, huh. hey maria you yeah. want to go to prom with me <laughs> yeah that i don't know how i feel about that impression <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah, it was uh, beyond the. Uh, I got some homework to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, that was one of those like jarring things for me, but then it went away because the performances are all great. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to note on? I'm sure there's more we could talk about, but we are running low on time, unfortunately. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's anything else. Do you want to give your facts? Uh, yeah. Let's run through some statistics real quick. Um. Tomato meter, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with 95. All right. You want to change? Uh, audience, what do you want? Audience. I feel like audience is the same. Usually, uh, it's higher. I'm going to say maybe it's a little bit lower. I'm going to go 92. Okay. No, no, 98. I'm going to go higher. 98. 98 for 98. audience? Yeah. Okay. You want to lock those in? Lock them in. All right. For tomato meter, you said 95. Yes. It was 93%. Ooh, two off. Uh, with that knowledge, do you want to change your audience score from 98? Let me go to Rotten Tomatoes and let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it. It is 95 for audience. Oh. Both still extremely, extremely high scores high. for Rotten Tomato as well. Do you know what's higher? Um, Spider-Man No Way Home. Was it already like rated that high? Yeah. It, oh I, my goodness. Last I looked, it was ninety five percent. This conversation on no way home. Okay, it's at ninety four percent right now. One percent higher. Okay. Uh, IMDb rating is eight point uh, or eight out of ten, which is uh, audience score uh, for the box office. It barely scraped over in Kanto. Yeah, um, it's not doing so hot at the box office. But the Grey Showman did not do well in his first week, mm-hmm. and then it ramped up. That's what a lot of musicals do. Yeah. So I'm hoping. It'll I'm scared get a lot of people aren't giving it a chance. I know. Especially like the older folk who prefer West Side Story. Well, its main audience was uh oh, really? older people. The demographic of yeah. it. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh let's see. I have uh Emma Stone, Kristen Bell, and Jennifer Lawrence were rumored uh for roles, but those oh. rumors were debunked. Oh okay. I think that's <laughs> for the better. Um 
especially I, I because like, I like them. I, but I do, but they are they, like onto El Gord. It would have they're old. Yeah, it would have felt like um. Well, never mind. I'm not gonna say La La Land because I've not seen it. And you I haven't seen La La Land? Maybe I don't know. Maybe I have not. Don't talk. Don't look at me. Um. <laughs> That is, oh my god. According to the behind the scenes <laughs> featurette of the film, Steven Spielberg explained why he always had uh, wanted to direct a motion picture adaptation of the 1957 Broadway musical production. Yeah, this was like a passion project um, for him. I have been challenged by what uh, would be the right musical to take on, and I could never forget my childhood. I was 10 years old when I first listened to the West Side Story album, and it never went away. I've been, uh, I've been able to fulfill that dream and keep that promise that I made to myself. You must make West Side Story. Wow. So I'm very glad he got to make it. He did a wonderful job with it. Yes. Um, uh, one last thing. Going uh-huh. back to Tick, Tick, Boom. I oh forgot to do the the tomato. Oh, meter. okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's all. That's all. I'll accept it. So guess the critic score. Oh, my God. It's going to be high. Uh, or critics, 86%. 86. 86? Okay. What's the audience score? Probably like around there, too, or something. If not higher. People are weird. Give me a number. 92. 92? Okay. So, for the tomato meter, you said 86? Yes. 88%. Okay. For the audience score, 92 is what you said. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, it says fewer than 50 verified ratings. Okay. So, I... All right. Take this with a grain of salt. What's the number, then? 96%. I was close. Holy crap. You were, yeah. Okay. Dang. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> well, that's yeah. fair enough. Uh, how would you rate West Side Story? West Side Story. I. I think I gave it like either a four or. I think I gave it a four to five stars. Mm-hmm. Um, because I the ending didn't hit as much as I. I yeah. think it could have. But that's just West Side Story. That's not the movie's fault. Um, but in a number score, I would give it. I'd. I'd give it like a ninety out of a hundred. If not, like, probably 92, 93. I really, really enjoyed it. I'd probably give it a 95, like, yeah. 9.5. This is, I keep going back and forth on my top ten list no. with this and another movie for oh one and two. I don't know if it's the movie you're thinking. <sighs> probably, it probably is. I, I don't know. It's not um, Tick, Tick, Boom. I'll tell you that. Thank God. Um, But, yeah, I keep going back and forth because this movie is so great. But um, it's 5.02. It so is. So we probably should wrap up. Um, so this is, that's a wrap. Yes. Join us next Wednesday. Hopefully we'll keep you updated on the Instagram, which is that's a wrap NCR. Uh, and if anything changes, you'll find us there. Otherwise join us. I believe it's December 22nd at 4 PM. Yes. Yes. And we'll be talking about Spider-Man. No way home. Uh, we won't be talking about spoilers, but no, no, no. uh, Try and get a ticket while you can because they're going fast. We have talked about like spoilers about, other movies we are going to be spoiler free yes if we might not even talk about the last i don't know hour yeah like just talk we'll about be very careful with it yeah um but all right yeah that's a wrap that's a wrap